is going to come up. Uh, her name is Reena Durai and she is from LV Prasad I Institute uh, and City, Institute, University of London. Okay. London mein LV Prasad I Institute. I'll uh, give a short introduction. She is a PhD student doing a research work at the LV Prasad uh, I Institute and City, University of London. She started a PhD work in 2019. Uh, and since then has been working from home during the pandemic, no, no, no. Uh, and since then has been actively sharing her work at several forums. Uh, when she is not studying vision science, she loves gardening, working out, painting and baking. Okay. Hi. Uh, while Raga was explaining his vision beyond earth, my study is about the actual vision. So, I am going to show you a quick way to trick the brain and the eye. Okay. So if you hold your thumb in front of you and then you close your right eye and the left eye, do it alternatively, what you see is that your thumb sort of moves towards the right and the left, right? Now this happens because your right eye and the left eye looks at the same thumb but from a different position, okay? Our brain is extremely capable and very good in inferring the smallest of the differences and inferring them as depth. Okay, so now instead of position change, instead of location change, what if I give a difference in the light levels? Okay, what if my right eye and the left eye has different amount of lights entering through the eye? Okay, what does the brain do? What do we see? It's a pulphric illusion. I don't know how many of you are aware about this illusion because it's a very subtle illusion. And this illusion has been studied in several countries by several vision scientists in order to understand what exactly is happening from the eye to the brain, okay? To get a feel for this illusion, okay, imagine the following scenario. You are about to cross the road, okay, from one end to the other. Now, you've done this many times. It's not a difficult task, but weirdly, this time, you have difficulty in judging the distance of a vehicle that's coming around, okay? You are not able to move forward. You're not able to decide whether to cross or not. Do you need glasses? You run a quick checklist, okay? You run a quick checklist. And what you understood is that your vision is very clear. Everything is normal. Nothing is abnormal. But still, you are hesitant to cross the road. Now, this loss of ability for you to judge the distance of a moving vehicle is because you're perceiving that illusion, okay? I'm going to talk more about this illusion now. So, to see this illusion, all you need is two good eye, and then you need something called as a neutral density filter. This is the neutral density filter. This looks like the X-ray film, a shorter version of the X-ray film, but the only difference is that light entering through the filter is going to be very less, okay? If I'm going, if I'm going to show 100% of light from the target, only 50% of the light is going to enter through the filter. So what I'm about to do is that with my two eyes, I place the filter in front of one eye and what I'm ideally doing is that creating a difference in the light level as I said before by the filter, okay? And remember both my eyes are open. So this difference in the light level is when you see this illusion. So what, how do you see this illusion? Imagine my hand as a pendulum bob, okay? We know, we all know how the pendulum moves in a to and fro motion, right? When I'm looking the same pendulum with the filter, how I see the position of the pendulum is not straight, but it in an elliptical pathway, okay? That's the illusion. Now, this elliptical pathway happens because there is a mismatch in the light levels in your eye. That's the Pulfrick illusion about. So, this illusion was first found by Carl Pulfrick. He is a very intelligent person. He came up with a lot of experiments, a lot of theoretical model, but he himself couldn't see this illusion because he was blind by one eye. And as I said, you need two eyes to see the illusion. How amazing is that, that this person wrote many theories about the illusion, but he himself could not see the illusion at all. So what we tried to add along Carl Pulfrick's work is that to answer the most fundamental question of, I've been talking about these differences between the eye. So what is the minimum amount of difference that you require to see this illusion is the question that we try to answer. And what we did is that, like how you see again, there's a neutral density turret that's there with different levels of filters. And we place it in front of one eye and ask the subject to see the monitor which has several dots that are moving similar to multiple pendulums moving to and fro, okay? All they have to say is whether they saw the illusion or not. And what we found was the most interesting 
uh, question that we answered is that the minimum difference, what's the difference between the eye, was around 13 candela. Now to make it more simple, this 13 candela is equivalent to the brightness that you get from uh, lit 10 candles. Okay, the brightness that you get from 10 candles light, that's the difference that is required to see this pulfric illusion. What was more interesting was that, why was the brain tricked? We know that the difference is, is going to cause us see the illusion, but how did the brain get tricked with all of this? So as I said, when you place the filter in front of one eye, now imagine there is a delay in the signal from the filter. So the eye without any filter transmits my signal from the eye to the brain quicker than the eye with the filter does. So this is a fast signal transmission and this is a low, very slow signal transmission. And that transmission delay was around 14 milliseconds. Okay, 14 milliseconds. Our blink rate, the way we blink is 100 milliseconds and this transmission delay was 14 milliseconds. Imagine the magnitude and the robustness of our brain and the eye to sort of understand these minute differences and create these illusions. So what is this about? Okay, this is a very cool illusion. So what? So I'm going to put my optometrist cap now. So we see a lot of patients, elderly patients who come up with the complaints like they have difficulty in crossing the road, they have difficulty in ascending and descending the staircases as well as you know pouring liquid from one dish to the other. So these are the complaints that have been always underrated in the clinic. What we found was the pulfric illusion could be a major culprit in causing these uh, symptoms that patients come up with. So. As I said, when you have two good eye, okay, you don't you don't have any illusion at all. But if one eye is affected, like the second uh, second image that you see with cataract, that's when you see the illusion. Okay, sorry, yeah. So the recommendation from this, what we understood was that you always need to balance both the eye. Whenever there is a difference between the eye, you end up seeing all funky illusions. So balance both the eye and did this finding change anything? Yes, it did. Because we wanted to take this to the community, reach the community. We published this in the journal so that people are more aware about these illusions and these illusions are considered when patients come up with a lot of bitter complaints and not neglected. And this is done so that everybody experiences and enjoys uh, illusion-free vision. Thank you.